Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about solutions. So solutions are very, very common, very, very important. For instance, the bottle of dish soap on the left side of your screen, that's an example of a solution. And that picture of Kool-Aid that you see on the right side of your screen is also an example of a solution. So let's review a little bit. At this point I believe we should know what a solution is, but it doesn't hurt to review. So a solution is nothing more than a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous means the composition, the chemical composition of the mixture is the same throughout the entire mixture. And in most applications, solutions have two components which are called the solute and the solvent. Now the solute of a solution is the substance that gets dissolved. So a solute is the smaller component. It's the minority component of the solution. The solvent is the majority component of the solution and it's the stuff that actually does the dissolving. So in this diagram here, this is a uh, diagram of a solution for instance, and these little blue particles are dissolved in this purplish looking stuff. Now the purplish looking stuff, that's what is doing the dissolving. That's the majority component, so that's what we would call the solvent. And then these blue particles here that are dissolved in the purple stuff, this is the minority component. This is the substance that actually gets dissolved, and we call that the solute. Now one of the most important and common types of solutions are called aqueous solutions. Now the term aqueous means that water is acting as your solvent. So whatever solute you have, if it's dissolved in water, then you have what's considered an aqueous solution. And the reason why aqueous solutions are so important is because there's a lot of important reactions that take place in aqueous solutions. And there's a lot of reactions in general that take place within aqueous solutions. For instance, the reactions that take place inside of lakes, streams, oceans are taking place within aqueous solutions. And in addition, a lot of the chemical reactions that take place inside our bodies are doing so within aqueous solutions. So the reactions that take place in every single cell of our body are actually doing so within an aqueous, water-filled environment. Believe it or not, our bodies are actually 57% water by mass. So what you're looking at when you're looking at me is mostly water, believe it or not. Now let's talk a little bit about solution concentration. And concentration refers to how much solute you have in your solution relative to the amount of solvent that you have. If you have a dilute solution, that means you have a very small amount of solute relative to the solvent in your solution. And then if you have what's considered a concentrated solution, that means you have a lot of salt a lot of solute relative to your solvent. So for instance, if I were to take just a pinch of Kool-Aid powder and dissolve it in a cup of water, that would result in a very dilute solution. Dilute is just very watered down, not much solute in there at all, and it probably wouldn't taste very good. On the flip side, if I have a concentrated solution, that would be like taking five tablespoons of Kool-Aid powder and dissolving it in just one cup of water. That would make a very potent, very syrupy, very concentrated solution of Kool-Aid. Now the terms dilute and concentrated are all fine and great, but they're relative terms. We need a more absolute term by which to uh, express the concentration of a solution. Now the most common term that is used to express solution concentration is called molarity. And molarity is defined as the amount of solute that you have in your solution, and that is in moles, divided by the volume of the solution, which is in liters. So to get molarity, which is represented by a capital M, you just take the moles of your solute and divide it by the liters of solution. That'll give you molarity. So let's talk about how to prepare a solution of a specified molarity. So let's say we're trying to prepare a solution that has one mole of sodium chloride dissolved in one liter of water. This would be, this solution would have a molarity of one. We would call this a one molar sodium chloride solution. Now the first thing that you would do is you would start adding your solute, which in this case would be sodium chloride, you would start adding your solute to a volumetric flask. So you would weigh out one mole of sodium chloride and you would add it to a volumetric flask. In the next step, you would add your solvent, which is water, so we would add that water until the one liter mark is reached. So notice that we're not adding one mole of sodium chloride to a liter of water, because remember, to get the molarity, 
the bottom of that term, the denominator is not liters of solvent, it's liters of solution. So if we added one mole of sodium chloride to one liter of water, that would result in a total volume that is greater than one liter. So instead, we're adding the solute to the flask and then we are diluting it to the mark with solvent. So then once we have added enough water to reach the one liter mark of this volumetric flask, then we would uh, shake the flask up, mix the solute all in that solvent, make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and that would result in a solution that has a molarity of one. We would call this a 1.00 molar sodium chloride solution. So in the next slide, I'm going to go over a uh, simple calculation involving molarity, and then we'll be all done. So this problem says, calculate the molarity of a 5.00 liter solution containing 2.47 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now remember, the formula for molarity, that's simply the moles of solute over the liters of solution. So we're going to plug in those values. We have 2.47 moles of our solute, which is HCl, divided by 5.00 zero liters of the HCl solution and that results in a molarity of 0 0.494. So this is a 0 0.494 molar hydrochloric acid solution. Okay that's it for this video. In the next video we'll talk a little bit more about solutions and calculations involving molarity and stuff like that. So I hope this was helpful and all right that's it. Take care.